Hi. Hi. My name is Michael. And I'm Nemi. And welcome to Mike. And Nemi Plus. Madeline the Great says, I know you guys talk a lot about trying your best to stay together, but I would love to hear your guys' opinion about when it is necessary to leave the relationship, like a toxic relationship or something like that. Thank you for your question. Madeline the Great. <laughs> And it's a tough question indeed, and I don't think we can give a perfect answer, and mm. we won't mm -hmm. because we can't. Yes. But I believe that what we say could be helpful in understanding mm. or perhaps in the future making a more informed decision. I want us to begin to understand this through a diagram of the onion. Now we're going to pull it up. I hate onions. And this is what you see right here. It helps us understand how separation or divorce or whatever it is, there's a, when you do separate, it's a separation upon separation within a separation. Mm. It's layers of When you're cutting separation. an onion, you don't just cut an onion, but you cut like 5,000 layers of right. the onion. And that's why this issue of whether to split or not becomes... It can be really complicated. Not only complicated, but it's also the reason why it's so painful. Actually, what usually happens in a divorce is that one person has been thinking about it for several years I think, actually like generally breakups too maybe not within just a marital context yes mm -hmm. and what usually happens is one person typically thinks about it for a long time and then shares one day and the other person is utterly shocked distressed they don't know how to react there's a breakdown in this diagram here uh, i think what really unites a relationship or marriage is the sexual union, a the spiritual physical union. That separation is so deep that when you do separate or divorce, you're severing a part of yourself and ident identity. The person you've been with and got to know and share and do life together for so many years. Also, there's a family divorce, you know, how, children and in-laws mm -hmm. deal with that. There's a legal divorce, there's the, the physical and emotional, the social, your community, your community around you, your friends, church, clubs, places. There's also an economic and financial divorce and separation. It's such a difficult and painful process. Zeke just woke up right now and that's why you see Nami holding him and rocking him. He actually has a fever. He just got sick yesterday. But uh, getting back to my point in relation to the diagram of the onion, it is a very complicated answer and i think i can answer this in two ways and i do think both are biblical and i want to give a more focused answer for a married couple who are already bound by a law in a covenant and also perhaps gave a public kind of decor declaration with vows with and vows everything. because in a marriage there's a lot more ties that are connected and there's a cultural and social legal familial physical spiritual so so the two perspectives are one is more of a biopsychosocial approach to the health and well-being uh, of a marriage relationship and the other one taking it more from a biblical stance of responsibility in marriage i wonder though i don't think we can give a solid answer because what if there is the individual let's say the female counterpart is totally dependent on right. the male part uh, and if they were to just separate or divorce they become garbage so being sensitive to all of these things i would say there had to be a case-by-case -case situation of you had to discern what is the wisest decision and it is very difficult because in cases of physical sexual verbal abuse some women are trapped in these relationships where and vice versa as well and vice versa as well where if they were to separate or leave maybe their life would be in endangered. Mm -hmm. I believe in cases of physical violence, even after being confronted about or tried to be resolved or talked about, that if it still persists and to a discerning level, those are grounds enough to separate. separate because- That's abuse. That is abuse, not and only that. It's breaking what the relationship is meant for. You are committing to each other to provide for your needs, to love each other, and to support and protect each other. But that's exactly opposite of what you're doing if you are being toxic source. I don't know, I'm torn in this because part of me believes that 
God never intends for divorce to happen, but allows it because of our hardness of hearts or our selfishness or our sin. Our sin. I think there needs to be intervention if the toxic relationship isn't intervened or isn't taking intervention well, then there comes times when you just have to know that it won't work out. Yes. But in a marriage context, there, it's a, it's a totally different ground that you have to consider. Yes. And that is only considering that there is intervention because, right. let's say... In most cases, people don't have resources for that or yes. even... Guidance. Right. And statistics will say one in six women experience domestic abuse. But one in three. One in three. And that's only for the, that what's reported. And that doesn't include emotional or verbal or mental abuse. I already know like four women who've opened up to me about it, about mm. their personal experience. Mm-hmm. And for one of the women, it was like multiple men that were abusive, like right. three or four of them consecutively. I think a part of me of why I'm having such a difficult time answering this question is because this question of whether to leave a relationship or not is really a last resort kind of response mm-hmm. where I like to approach issues from an interventionist approach mm-hmm. before it gets there. And that takes me to option two, which is I don't think it's ever okay to divorce. And now let me explain. The reason why is because typically 9 out of 10 times, it's the men who commit a physical assault or physical abuse. And I believe that... Wouldn't you say it's half and half if it was also mental and emotional? Perhaps yes. And so we're both at fault, really. Right. I believe that men must first acknowledge and be wed to Christ, to God. And that really is our first marriage. We are the bride and he is the groom. And if we pursue Christ likeness, if we truly pursue as husbands to love our wives as Christ loved the church. What about in situations, just relationships, toxic relationships, whether it's dating or common law or non-marital relationships? When do you decide when to leave? I think that question is very vague because all relationships are so different that gauge in when you should leave is so different for everyone right there's so many studies done on you know why does one behave in a way that would stimulate aggression it's the whole nature versus nurture debate and when it comes to crime or violent crime based on what i've read so far and you may have a different conclusion but it's nature that is a stronger predictor over life experiences nurture which precipitates the possibility of violent crime or even okay. reoffending, yes, recidivism. And so when it comes to temperament or anger or outbursts, it really is more biological. But when it comes to character, it's that's when nurture steps in. If someone has been in a relationship where there's been one or two or more experiences of, of violence or abuse, I would say don't expect that to change once you're married or some there's a some kind of change in environment or you find a new job or you live in a new place or that can really still stay because it's part of temperament part of the biological nature or perhaps mm-hmm. even has my abuse gotten better people if they looked at our relationship i think some people would say it could have been toxic if i was always nervous or always like unstable and insecure i think it depends on your ability I think it was, to, yeah. it, it was toxic and I, I, it was difficult. So the question is, should I have left that? Or when was it right to? What were the grounds to justify me right. leaving the relationship? Right. I think there is a safeguard that we can have where you always have to have kind of a social safety net. Mm-hmm. Where, and also boundaries. Mm-hmm. It's like once you're in a relationship, it's not just us and our lives. Mm-hmm. You still have to maintain relationships around that like like even as a male have other female relationships have other male relationships have at least a net of some accountability like Mm -hmm. you don't have to have someone who you pour out a hundred percent to maybe you can have three people who you talk to but each person you only share 30 percent of a different facet or Mm -hmm. face of the relationship in which you can kind of cover the whole hundred percent so that can help you in providing you consultation, right. counsel, yeah. advice, wisdom. wisdom, maybe even give you wisdom in how you may be doing wrong into the right. relationship. Right. Even though you are in a relationship, whether it is a abusive one or toxic one or not, you should never be going alone together. You should be going with others in a community. Right. And so it can help you realize what things are maybe too much or not. Mm -hmm. And also involving people who love and care about you are really important, like family or very close friends. 
Though I feel like we didn't really give a solid answer. I feel like this kind of question can never really have a solid answer mm. due to it's the differences and in, intricacies of yes. each individual relationship. Mm-hmm. And each individual person mm-hmm. even within yep. each relationship. And so. also where you're situated, where you live. Too. Right. Culture, Culture so geography, environment, yeah, everything. everything. Mm. But what would definitely help is evaluating your values, evaluating each other's values, evaluating what is important, and getting the people around you who mm. love and care about you to also yes. evaluate that mm-hmm. and align it with your actions or your words and yes. see if it's actually healthy. And if it's not, then what are the wise steps you can take to either help work through your relationship or possibly having to end it? And mm-hmm. sometimes that's the case. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you again for your question. We always like to hear your opinions as well. So Mm -hmm. definitely let us know what you think on this topic. And we'll see you next time.